let's have a prayer and let's bow our head. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise your name for all the blessings you are receiving day by day. You are our God, our refuge and strength in our daily walks. We ask your Holy Spirit to come into our hearts and minds for us to have a clear discernment of the subject we will study in tonight's lesson. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. Uh, let's start. How would you like to reach the age of 100 and enjoy every moment of living? I'm already 73. And I'm 27 short of 100, na? <laughs> In late 2005, National Geographic featured an article on longevity and quality of life. The author, Dan Butner, gathered a team of researchers to score the world for healthy communities. His plan was to discover pockets of the globe where people were living measurably better than anywhere else. And this, I will play a video and see what he found out. And this is titled, The Blue Zone. Only about 10% of how long the average person lives is dictated by our genes. The other 90% is dictated by our lifestyle. We're leaving about 12 good years on the table. None of them exercise, at least the way we think of exercise. Instead, they set up their lives so that they're constantly nudged into physical activity. The Sardinians live in vertical houses up and down the stairs. They don't have any conveniences. There's not a button to push to do yard work or housework. If they want to mix up a cake, they're doing it by hand. Here we have this area where men live the lot. So people not only reach age 100, they do so with extraordinary vigor. Places where 102 year olds still ride their bike to work chop wood and can beat a guy 60 years younger than them. They have vocabulary for sense of purpose. Instead, there's one word that imbues your entire life and that word is God. And roughly translated means the reason for which you wake up in the morning. This 100 year old fisherman who was continuing to catch fish for his family three times a week. For this 102-year-old woman, her ikigai uh, was simply her great, great, great granddaughter. And I asked her what it felt like uh, to hold a great, great, great granddaughter. And she put her head back and she said, it feels like you to have Each of these cultures take time to downshift. The Sardinians pray, the Seventh-day Adventists pray, the Okinawans have this ancestral veneration. When you're in a hurry or stressed out, that triggers something called the inflammatory response, which is associated with everything from Alzheimer's disease to cardiovascular disease. The greatest sort of diet suggestion ever invented is known as the Hara Hachibu diet. Simply a little saying these people say before their meal to remind them to stop eating their stomach is 80% full. They have all kinds of little strategies to keep from overeating. They eat off the smaller plates. They tend to eat fewer calories in every city. A plant-based diet full of vegetables with lots of color in them. And they eat about eight times as much tofu as Americans do. Doesn't mean they don't eat meat, but lots of beans and nuts. Then the foundation of all this is how they connect 
put their families first, take care of their children and their aging parents. And then hardwired right in the religion are nature walks. They also belong to the right tribe. They were either born into or they proactively surrounded themselves with the right people. Uh, they all tend to belong to a faith-based community. The Seventh-day Adventists celebrate their uh, Sabbath from sunset on Friday to sunset on Saturday, a, tw a 24 hour sanctuary in time. They call it. And these people drink a little bit every day, not a hard sell to the American population. When it comes to longevity, there is no short-term fix in a pill or anything else. But when you think about, about it, your friends are long-term adventures, and therefore, perhaps the most significant thing you can do to add more years to your life than life to your years. So, we have learned from the, that video that four groups or communities and that each group has both the longevity and vitality of life. They are fresh, energetic, and happy. They seem to die young at an old age. What is their secret to health and well-being? The research uncovered an emphasis on family relationship, a plant-based diet and exercise. Importantly, each group also has a sense of faith and participates in a spiritual community. Of the four groups, Butner refers to the Seventh-day Adventists as the all stars of longevity with an emphasis on whole person health. This group has a much lower than average incidence of lifestyle related illness. Now, let's learn more about your health and make positive changes to your lifestyle as a result. The most successful health outcomes are those that focus on all aspects of health food and nutrition, exercise and fitness, mind and heart. This is a whole person's health and is crucial to living well. And let us also learn what the Bible says about health. Is there any connection between our physical health and spiritual health. How can we change? This is that. Uh, how can we change our health habits? And this study guide reveals the biblical keys to a happy and healthy life. We can promise that you will live to 100, but you should find the experience of living much more enjoyable. You may ask this question, and let's open our Bible. Uh, the question is, how important is our health? And we can read and read John 2, and it says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, but as your soul prospers. It seems in this verse is a personal message by God to us or to his friend. It may say, dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. 
oh, what a touching message of love from our loving God, Lord and friend. Health is one of the most important subjects of the Bible. The reason? Human beings are an integrated whole body, mind, heart, and spirit. And the Apostle John wished his friends to prosper both physically and spiritually. Whatever affects the health of the body will impact on the whole person. This includes the way we feel, think, and interact in our relationship. When you nurture your body physically, your mind will also be active. A clear mind helps connect to God spiritually. A spiritual life provides a life purpose to be passionate about. These forms of a platform for a true health and happiness. Why did God give his people laws of health? In Exodus 23, 25, we read, So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. God gave his people health love to protect them from sickness and keep them from premature and unnecessary death. As the creator God, he knows what is best for our health. God gave the prophet Moses a number of principles that are still very important today. And some of these principles include diet, hygiene, sterilization, morality, rest, and quarantine. Quarantine, very much popular today because of this COVID-19 that affects almost the whole world. This measure of seclusion was also imposed during the days of Moses. The sick or those who had an issue be secluded in the camp to prevent contagion or contamination to others who are well. God taught his people the value of cleanliness and cleanliness was part of godliness. So how does Jesus want us to live? And he says in John 10:10, 10, 10, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Health is not just the absence of pain and disease. It is the presence of vitality and abundant life. God's concept of health is an exchange, something worse for something better, destroying for restoring, hollow for satisfying, and God wants us to flourish, to have energy, vitality, radiance, optimism, resilience, be enthusiastic, to have meaning, to have purpose, fulfillment, joy, activation, empowerment, inspiration, and satisfaction, and basically to love life. An abundant life includes the personal presence of Jesus. In fact, a Christless health is really no health at all. Jesus provides us with peace, assurance, and hope, not just healing and restoration, much more a life of health and happiness beyond our imagination. True health means living a full and abundant life, free as much as possible from the burden of disease. It's about living more. The World Health Organization agrees, stating health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Health is an underrated gift 
which we often take for granted, or worse still, neglect or destroy it. That is until we lose it. So, what does the Bible call our body? In Corinthians 6, 80, uh, 19 and 20, it says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Therefore, glorify God in your body. Some people have the attitude, Oh, it's my body. What can do? I can do what I like with it. But human life is a Yuma, is a home for the Holy Spirit. As such, we have a responsibility to nurture and nourish our body to ensure it is in the best possible condition to maintain a loving relationship with God. If the mind is dulled through sickness, then God's communication is made more difficult and spiritual growth is stunted. Having vitality and good health helps you understand the Bible and establish a close relationship with God. So what are some practical ways you can enhance your health? It says in Corinthians 10, 31, therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So here are 10 practical principles to live a happy, healthy life. And all of them are consistent with biblical principles. And many of them are directly mentioned in the Bible. Number one is breath fresh air. Pure air in the lungs does wonderful things for our health. Our lungs are clean and the blood is purified and our brain receives a special boost of energy. Fresh air also soothes the nerves and keeps our mood positive and optimistic. We spend so much time stuck in the dust and stale air of houses, schools, and offices. It is vital that we ventilate our homes and get out into the fresh air. Venture out for a morning walk. Take a stroll down by the seaside or climb a mountain and take a deep breath and you will just feel good. Fresh air contributes to good health and positive well-being. Inhaling fresh air nurtures almost every cell in our body. Unfortunately, those of us who live in the many cities of the world are exposed to pollution in the air that can damage our health. And if it becomes concentrated over time, this can be especially stressful for those who are susceptible, such as the young, and elderly, as well as those who suffer with chronic pulmonary obstructive disease, such as black arteries, and such as emphysema and chronic bronchitis. Those who live in environments with poorer air quality should endeavor to escape to the great outdoor as open as possible. So next we have rest. We should take much rest. Life today is too hectic. The average day is full of multitasking, commitments, and deadlines. To fit everything in, we often lose out on rest, relaxation, and sleep. Sleep researchers are discovering the importance of sleep for learning and memory. And the impact that a lack of sleep has on our health, safety, and longevity. In general, 
Our society is burning the candle of both ends. We need to rethink how we prioritize sleep, as it is one of the basic building blocks of good health. When Jesus said to his disciples, come aside and rest a while, that's in Mark 6, verse 31. He knew what he was talking about. The batteries of life need to be recharged. And during the rest, the body is restored and rejuvenated. The mind becomes calmer and clearer. There is nothing better than waking up refreshed after a good deep sleep. Finally, ensure the sleep environment has a comfortable temperature. It's not cluttered with distractions like TV and radios and make sure you have a good mattress. Secondly, avoid heavy meals alcohol, nicotine, or caffeine before you go to bed. When you wake up, open the blinds or go out into the sunshine. If life is too hectic, make sure you take a vacation. At the very least, take time just to chill out in nature and relax for a while. Jesus gave us the Sabbath rest. This is time for our whole person to rest and connect with God, family, and friends. And God says in Exodus 28 to 11, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work. Neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Next principle, soak in sunlight. It is important that we get out and feel the sun. Of course, too much sun can result in skin cancer. So we need to be careful. But exposure to sunlight on our skin produces the very necessary vitamin D, and it's called the sunshine vitamin. Vitamin D helps the body absorb calcium, which strengthens the bones. Up to 15 minutes of sunlight a day boosts the immune system and helps reduce the risk of cancer. Sunlight aids mental concentration, gives more energy, and can even lower blood pressure. Sunlight also nurtures our emotions and minds. Tests have shown that the life-giving rays of the sun help people who battle with mood swings and depression, said Dr. Norman Rosenthal. We are all familiar with the sun's safe message regarding protection from harsh UV rays in our climate using sunscreen, protective clothing, and others. In Australia and New Zealand, we have an abundance of sunlight to enjoy. Next principles, enjoy life. Our mental attitude to life has a major impact on our overall health. And the Bible says, a merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones says in Proverbs 17, verse 22. So be an optimist and have good luck once in a while. According to author Jane Campsey, adults love on average only 15, 15 times per day, while kids enjoy a giggle 
up to 400 times per day. Laughter relieves the symptoms of stress through releasing endorphins from the brain. And according to research researchers, Dr. Lieber and Dr. William Fry from Loma Linda University, happy, joyful laughter produces measurable changes in a person's immune system. Our mental attitude to life has a major impact on our overall health. There are many other ways for you to feel the experience of enjoying life and try your hand at one of the arts play. Write or sing music, write poem or book, create a short film or paint a picture. Go down to the beach, fly a kite, go shopping with friends, read a good book and just discover what you are passionate about and do it. Next principles, drink water. Humans cannot survive for very long without water. The body is at least 60% water and is vital for the daily functioning of the body. Water transport nutrients to the vital organs of the body and cleanses the body of waste. Water also lubricates our joints and aids in digestion. The benefits of drinking plenty of water includes less headaches, enhanced memory, replenish skin, improved immune system, reduction in the risk of some cancers, and weight control. Experts suggest we drink at least eight to 10 glasses of water per day. Water can also be effective natural treatment for illness. Hydrotherapy is an ancient form of water, water treatment that uses the stimuli of hot and cold, along with the sensations of water on the skin. This can stimulate the immune system, improve circulation, and reduce stress. We all know water is essential to life. This is obviously essential to achieving good health. The human body is made largely of water, and excluding the water we drink, we also get some foods and other drinks. Not all fluids are created equal, however. Beverages with added sugar, alcohol, and caffeine should be limited. Next is nurture your relationship. At the heart of human need is to love and be loved. People who have quality relationship and regularly experience social time are likely to be healthier and happier. To nurture your relationship, you need to spend quality time. Try telling those close to you how much they mean to you. Write them a letter or even a quick SMS message. If you have a disagreement, Ensure you don't carry around the grudge. Allow yourself to forgive and forgiven. Connecting with the community also can enhance health. Try joining a local community group. Volunteer and help others. So why not create a community garden in your area? For the Christians, the most precious relationship we have is our friendship with God. As you spend time with him, you will find your whole person health and happiness growing. Next. Oh. Be active. At creation, God appointed Adam and Eve to do work that involved exercise. Genesis 2.15. 
Being active provides a variety of very important benefits to our health. Exercise reduces worry and stress, builds muscle, reduces fat, helps us feel good, and reduces the risk of heart disease. Unfortunately, many of us today have jobs that involve very little exercise. It is vital that we still make time in our busy bustle to create in movement for our body. If you are just starting, then begin slowly. <clears throat> the aim is to get to a point where your heart rate increases while you exercise. The importance of walking. Walking is open viewed as the best exercise with an aim of at least 30,000 steps per day. Exercise is cumulative, so even if you move your body for 15 minutes, two to four times per day, you will be gaining the benefits of being active. Most of all, find an activity you really enjoy. You will not only get fit and healthy, you will feel good while you do it. More and more research is recognizing incidental and planned activity and decreased sedentary time as being important influences on our health. Western lifestyle has made inactivity a normal part of our lives. It is not common for individuals to spend three or four hours a day commuting to work on top of eight or more hours sitting at a desk, as well as six to eight hours of sleep per day. This doesn't leave much time for movement, let alone planned physical activity and is related to chronic disease. Next is eat well. And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seeds which is on the face of all the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you it shall be for food that's in genesis 1 verse 29 the original diet that god gave to human beings revolved around whole plant foods it began with fruits grains and nuts and expanded to include vegetables. See Genesis 3.18. A diet based on colorful fruits, vegetables, seeds, legumes, and nuts can be very tasty, and these foods restore and nourish the body. And processed plant-based foods have the nutrients that help prevent many chronic diseases, such as heart disease cancer, and diabetes. They also help maintain a good body weight and help you to feel good. Man's original plant-based diet lasted for over 1,500 years. And throughout the time, the average lifespan was 912 years. After the flood, plant foods were obviously quite rare, so God allowed meat to be eaten. And there were guidelines, however, to ensure health was maintained. God had divided the meats into clean and unclean, and he told his people to never eat the unclean. And also God stipulated that the blood of the meat should be drained out and no animal fat should be eaten. Uh, that's in Leviticus 3 verse 17. In the Bible, God is specific in terms of which food are unfit for human eating. The clean meats are those that have a split hoof and chew the cud. The clean fish are those that have scales and the fins. Meats such as pigs, prawns, rats, and rabbits should all be avoided as food. Other meats such as cattle, 
and labs were approved. You can read that on Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy chapter 14. God is so serious about this issue that he even says that those who eat swine will be destroyed by fire at the second coming. That's an Isaiah 66, verse 15 to 17. In the last days of earth history, it still makes sense to eat a plant-based diet. And processed whole plant foods have the nutrition that people require without the harmful effects of meat. Growing plant foods also uses less energy and other scarce resources than meat production. They are a smart choice for the environment. Eating is one of the pleasures of life. God has given us our senses so we can be fascinated by food. He has given variety in texture, color, and flavor so we can enjoy our eating experience. In this book, Food Rules by Michael Pollan, he makes an interesting statement. Eating what stands on one leg, that's the mushroom and spinach, is better than what stands on two legs like chicken, which is better than what stands on four legs, and that's cows or pigs. And eating a balanced and varied diet is vital for living well. Food provides our bodies with energy, protein, essential fats, vitamins, and minerals to live, grow, and function properly. It's important to choose the most nutritious foods possible to meet your needs. With more and more foods available in our food supply that tend to provide a large amount of energy for a small amount of nutrition, and this making it more difficult than ever. Respect the body. God wants us to take care of our bodies and avoid those things that are damaging. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, and which temple you are. That's in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 17. Fitness guru Trevor Roman asked the question, if you don't care of your body, where are you going to live? That's a good question. If we mistreat our bodies, we may not get a second chance. To it, suppose you knew you would only ever have one car in life. How would you look after it? So we would ensure it received good fuel, good oil, and good maintenance. So to illustrate, we. We only ever have one body. We should care for our body as if it is the most priceless treasure on earth. So how will you respect the body? So you, we need to avoid, some of the dangers we need to avoid are alcohol. Drinking alcohol is unwise and inconsistent with the Christian life, lifestyle. It says in Proverbs 20, verse 1, Wine is a mucker, a strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. So there are some studies that suggest positive health benefits from moderate wine consumption. However, many of these same benefits can be gained from other juices and foods. Also. Alcohol can negatively impact on the vital organs of the body. This includes the brain, liver, and kidneys. In 2005, the Sydney Morning Herald reported a new research with a headline, 
Suffering study says even one drink can do you harm. The research indicated that even small quantities of alcohol increased the risk of heart disease. Back in the 1990s, researchers discovered that even just one or two drinks decreased the brain's ability to gather information, impairs memory, perception, and judgment. With all the attraction and temptation of the world, we need a mind that is clear and in tune with God. In the Bible, the word wine can mean either fermented wine or the pure juice from the grape. God is so definite in his opposition to fermented wine that he says we shouldn't even look at it in Proverbs 23, 29 to 32. The wine that Jesus created at the marriage feast was the good wine, the same sort of wine described by the prophet Isaiah as new wine that is found in the cluster, Isaiah 65, verse 8. In other words, fresh grape juice, it is hardly likely that Jesus would create barrel loads of alcohol so people could get drunk. At the Last Supper, Jesus said to his disciples that he would not drink from the fruit of the vine again until they meet again in heaven. That's in Matthew 26, verse 29. So once again, there will not be fermentation and alcohol in heaven. Clearly, Jesus was drinking the pure grape juice fresh from the vine. So next is drugs and nicotine. Although cigarettes and contemporary drugs are not specifically mentioned in the Bible, the principles of not destroying your body is found in the scriptures in 1 Corinthians 3.17. Drugs and cigarettes are major causes to the health of people within our community. The poison affect the blood and cause a range of life-threatening diseases. God created you to be happy and healthy. The last thing he wants is for you to be smoking or taking drugs. There are many subtle forms of drugs today that are also causing illness. Try drinking some herbal teas as a replacement to tea and coffee or fruit juices as a replacement for high energy drinks. Your body will be better for the change. So the last principle is trust in God. Trusting in God takes away the weary and stress of life. We know that many diseases originate in the mind in particular. Guilt and fear can affect the whole body. Trusting in God brings inner peace and hope for the future. Even if we follow the laws of health, it is still God who brings health and healing. And bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. That's in Psalm 103, verse 2 to 40. Some may have a chronic illness and see no relief inside. If that is you, then Jesus gives you the promise. My grace is sufficient for you. God does not always remove sickness. We live in a world damaged by sin. But if you trust in Jesus, he will sustain you, your challenges. In the new earth, we will have a new and perfect bodies. And there will be no more death, nor sorrow, 
nor crying. That's the promise in Revelation 21 4. So these are the 10 health principles breath, fresh air, rest, sunlight, enjoy life, drink water, nurture relationship, be active, eat well, and respect the body and trust in God. So, what is the secret to change our lifestyle? It says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So, take your worry, guilt, fear, addiction, and bad habits to Jesus today. A happy and healthy life is a journey. Why not take the first step today? So these are the three points to remember. God wants us to be happy and healthy. God's original health plan is still the best. And through Christ, God has the power to break any bad habits. Need your response. Do you accept that living a healthy life is an important part of a daily relationship with Jesus? And would you like to decide today to grow step by step towards a healthy body, mind, and spirit? So what's your response? I hope it's yes. And let's pray. Let's bow our head, please. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for having preserved our life thus far and for giving us the blessing of our health and your strength. For you are the holy above all others and all of the strength that I need daily is in your hands. Father, we are all encountering unimaginable and unfortunate trials and tribulations that are causing us to have rough roads to tread and high mountains to climb. We are weary and burdened by all that is taking place in this world that you so beautifully created. So on this day, I ask that you walk with us, keep us lifted, with your righteous hand. And please be the strength that we need to cope with hope, knowing that in your perfect way, you will bring us through the rough storms of life. I ask and pray that you settle our mind, body, and soul. Father, and let your will and your ways be done in our life. We are in need of your strength and your help. And I ask that you grant each of us your peace and a stable mind as you work things out for our highest good. Removing all that is not pleasing to your eyes and removing all that hinders us from drawing near to you. And may your lives be filled with the victory of rest, refreshment, and your peace, knowing that we will find our satisfaction in you alone, as we cling to your promise that in you we can overcome all things. In your name, I pray. Amen. <laughs>